Hey, I'm Joel. Thanks for watching The Joy of Fixing. Well, it's been a long day as you can see the sun went down, but today I put together a rainwater collection system. You know, there's some kind of interesting disasters taking place up in Ohio right now, and it motivated me to finally do a project that I wanted to do. I bought a couple of these old blue barrels at some point. They used to store medical grade saline, so they are about as clean as you're gonna get. Um, but what I wanted to do was build a rainwater collection unit. Um, in another video, I'm gonna talk about filtering rainwater and drinking it, because uh, clearly you don't wanna drink rainwater straight with all the particulates and uh, pollution and all the crap that's coming off your roof. But as far as my garden goes, Everything dies when I use my hose water. It's just not good. There's a lot of stuff. We live near a big mining operation and the groundwater is kind of so-so, very hard. Plus I live near a lot of farming and agriculture, which means I'm getting a lot of things like Roundup, those glycophosphates, all that other chemical down in the water. We already filter our water in our house, but you know, I'm looking for different options. So for the garden, I would like to have clean rainwater on hand at all times for watering our small garden that we're gonna be putting in this year. And I figured the best thing I could do is start collecting rainwater like I planned. So in the future, I have a large rainwater collection plan, a uh, couple of rainwater collection projects. But for now, to have one immediately, in one day, I put together a rainwater collection unit that you can see behind me. And I'm about to walk you through my process of putting this together quickly with all parts from Lowe's or Home Depot as long as you've got a nice plastic food grade or medical grade barrel. So let's go ahead and check out this video and uh, I hope it helps you out. Hope it gives you ideas and realize I'm just showing you how I did it. You can get creative and do it your own way, but I know this is working great for me. I'd put it together as a prototype and it rained a little bit earlier and I had about 40 gallons real quick, no problem. I just took some parts apart to tighten them up and make sure it's the way I want it. But with that said, Let's go. Let's check this thing out and I'll show you what I did. So of course we're looking at getting a barrel first. I do not recommend metal barrels for this. I recommend these plastic barrels, white or blue, food grade or medical grade of course. With a horizontal configuration like this, definitely one without the removable lid type. The first thing I did with this barrel was make these little wooden feet for it. Basically it's a 3x4 or a 4x4 with some 45 degree angle cut chunks of 2x4 that I pushed up against the edge of the bottom of the barrel. This keeps the barrel from rolling around. And that is the first thing you want to build. Now, the first thing we're going to start doing when we modify this barrel is cutting the hole in the top. You can see I added this black plastic grate to it, which I found in the culvert section or the underground drainage section at the Lowe's. And I was able to cut a hole about that size with this electrical hole saw that I have to fit it in there. This needs to be something I can get into easily if I want, but also something that keeps animals out of it in large debris. I've seen people use things like screen screwed to the top and other stuff like that for a pre-filter, but honestly I wanted something that was a little easier than that. I can always add screen over the top of this, but I'm using multiple filtration devices, which you'll see throughout this video, to make sure that I pre-filter any leaves and large debris that may be coming down that downspout. Uh, obviously I can't do much about small debris. That would be filtered out at a later point, if I decide it needs to be filtered out. But as far as using it for garden water, that's gonna be just fine the way it is. So here we go, cutting the hole out. Oops, hole saw wasn't chucked on there too tight. But point is, nice hole. You can do this with a jigsaw as well. You can do this a lot of different ways. You don't have to use a hole saw. I just happen to have one from all the years I did as an electrical contractor. And of course, this thing fit right in there, real nice. And I actually tapped two holes in it and threw two screws in it so that it stays firmly on there. And all I have to do is remove two screws to get it off the top. You'll see that towards the end of the video. The next thing we're going to want to do is put in that spigot. So I went ahead and got some PVC fittings that can go through the wall of the pipe. Like you can see here, this is the assembly that I've put together. This little corner elbow is going to come out to where I can also add a part that hooks up to a garden hose if I'd like to. But this is the portion that will be going through the barrel. Like you can see here, I've got a threaded fitting and I have bought O-rings. These are number 18 O-rings for what I believe is a one inch threaded fitting. Not quite sure. You don't have to do the one inch either. I had originally thought of just using a hose bib or something small like that. But honestly, the inside diameter is so small that if you end up with enough built up sediment in the bottom of this rain barrel, you could eventually clog that up. And I figured, why restrict the flow? 
So I found a hole saw that was just the right size. And by hole saw, of course, I mean a spade bit. You thought you caught me, right? Go ahead and punch that thing out there and cleaned it out a little bit with a rasp. And now you can see, I'm going to put this fitting on the inside that's an inlet from the inside of the barrel. I'm putting an O-ring on the inside. And then, of course, I'm going to put an O-ring on the outside. So while I'm pushing this through, because the hole was so perfect, I almost had to thread that nylon through or PVC or whatever this is, definitely not nylon. Um, I had thought about just using a regular hose bib or a regular spigot, but at the end of the day, I realized that the inside diameter of that, especially once the ball opens up, is so small, I could eventually get clogged with sediment or just something like that, and I don't want to deal with it. I want to be able to get the water out of it quickly, because I'll be using this not just to water the garden, but possibly to fill other storage containers. Uh, because if we're going to go a stretch without rain, it'd be nice to use this as a collection device that I can also use to fill other containers and whatnot. So now I'm going to put this other O-ring on the outside. That way I'm positive I have some sort of sealing pressure from the inside and the outside between the fittings. Uh, you know, I fussed around with this a little bit. And I got to be honest, the first time I did this, which I will not show you, but I used a couple of fittings where the snout was so long and the receiver was so small right here, like you can see, that I ended up having to cut off a section of the threads. And we all know that that is a nightmare waiting to happen because you potentially run the risk of damaging the threads enough that you can cross thread this part going into the receiver. And that's exactly what happened. Um, now... The problem was also that I realized I had some issue with the threads in the receiver. Uh, it wasn't necessarily my fault that it got cross-threaded because I was pretty careful to make sure that I didn't have an issue with the threads there. But uh, regardless, I ended up pulling this part out and replacing it with new fittings that were fairly identical, but it, the one didn't have a manufacturing defect. So don't worry, you may run into issues with some of this stuff when you're threading it and putting pressure on it. But like you can see, that's the completed fitting and it's great. The next thing you need, of course, is the barrel overflow. Now, the reason I wanted to do a barrel overflow, of course, is I've seen a lot of rain barrels where you fill up to the top and then whatever's left just gushes over the top and runs down the side of the barrel. But that means your gutter is not discharging water away from your home or your structure. It's just pouring around all over next to the barrel, which can eventually lead to foundation damage or sink the post of one of your porches. So you're going to want the overflow. I went ahead and found these fittings for a gutter. Keep in mind, this doesn't have to be watertight. It's not a pressurized system. It's a place for the water to overflow out of just like it would a hole in your gutter. So this part may end up being a little leaky, but it doesn't matter because it's a place where the extra runoff at the top of barrel is supposed to run out. Now I'd considered putting this sideways because you can see it reaches down into the barrel pretty far. I probably could have gotten a few more gallons out of the storage if I hadn't put it upright and I'd put it horizontal instead. But honestly, I liked this application a lot better. Uh, this... Uh, configuration I guess you'd say um, so hot tip for all of you if you're trying to cut a rounded cornered uh, square box or rectangular box like this Ooh, a great way to get that nice clean circular corner is use yeah, the spade good. bit or your hole saw again the uh, then all you have to do is cut now. straight lines later so um, I'm trying to line this up correctly and again it doesn't have to be perfect um, but like you saw earlier I had that orange piece of rubber I was just showing with those two fittings I'm going to do one of those fittings on the inside of the barrel along with a custom made gasket that I'm going to cut out of that orange rubber, which I'm going to show you coming up here in just a second. That way I can be sure that it pulls together tight with the fitting on the inside and the outside with the gasket in the middle right. and doesn't cause any unnecessary leakage, at least where I don't want it. I'd rather it leak at the fitting than leak at the wall of the barrel. Now I've got out the sawzall. You can use a jigsaw. You can use a little tiny handsaw. You can use anything that'll cut this without being a nightmare for you. I'm just connecting the dots at the edge and cutting out this rectangular hole. Now this rectangular hole eventually, of course, is going to start getting fitted with gutter components. And what basically happens, of course, is the water is going to come off the gutter through the top, through the pre-filtration system that I'm building, and it's going to fill up the barrel. When the barrel gets full up to right about where the saw is there, right at the bottom of this square hole, any extra water is just going to flow out of the top of the barrel and continue out the gutter fitting I'm going to put in it like the barrel was never there. So below that line in this barrel, which is 55 gallons, Ooh, nice. I've figured that I'm carrying about, mm, say, 40 gallons, which is great. 40 gallons of storage, 
the rest is going to run off, no big deal, and go out that gutter and get hooked up to a nice black downspout extender pipe and pushed away from the foundation of my porch. Now I'm just cleaning up the edges of my cut with this razor blade. Um, you know, it's just like anything you cut with metal, you're going to want to deburr it. You cut something with plastic, I suppose you could call this deburring it. But anyway, you're just going to go ahead and clean this up. Clean up all the holes that you're putting in this barrel. There's no need to have weird debris or anything like that. This is already a very easy project. That's why I did it this way. There's many different ways to do this. In fact, another video I'll be doing in the future is a three barrel filtration tower. And that is not that much harder of a project. It's just more building and more time. Anyway, there's that orange sheet of rubber gasket material. I didn't even know this stuff existed, and I found it in one of the plumbing aisles uh, near the O-rings at Lowe's. Um, everything I purchased here other than the barrel was from Lowe's. Uh, granted, I prefer Home Depot, but I do find that when you get into weird little projects, sometimes Lowe's carries a couple of extra little items that you just may not find on the standard stuff at Home Depot. So it may be a longer shopping trip trying to find stuff at Lowe's because plumbing stuff's in four different parts of the store yeah, when you sure get into gutters and downspouts and all that. Anyway, I'm making this gasket here. As you can see, I've outlined it, and I'm trying to make it fit around this box. I ended up having to cut this out with a pair of 10-snip nippers because that was the only thing that had the sharpness to cut through this. I could have done the outside edges with a razor blade and the inside, but either way, I used what I had, and it worked. So you can see the shape of the gaskets coming together. This is a custom gasket. Now, I could have just done this with some sort of liquid gasket or something in a tube, but I'm trying not to add anything that's real contaminative to this water. I'd like it to be as clean as I can get away with. So here's the parts, two of those gutter downspout attachments and one of those rubber gaskets that I just made like I was showing you. I'm sliding it over it and I'm fitting it inside the tank. Then I'll sandwich it with the one on the outside. You don't even have to use this. If you can find some sort of a fitting that can make compression there and give you an outlet on the top and the bottom, go for it. The reason I went with this size is it's the same diameter as my gutter downspout and I was positive that it was going to be able to keep up with the water that was coming into it. So now what I've done is I've taken a clamp and some pieces of scrap wood and I'm pushing the bar clamp through the inside to pull in the inside piece of metal uh, and then pull in the outside piece of metal. Because I'm using self-tapping screws, they're going to tap and I didn't want to rely on the screw pulling these together because that's just not how it works. So I needed to pull them together as much as I could and reposition the clamps as I worked around the edge of it with the screws just to make sure that it could tap and it could hold it together as opposed to pulling it together tightly. So as you can see, I'm through it and on the inside, I'm back through the inside of the flange. That thing is sealed completely through with the gasket as well. Now what I'm gonna do is reposition some of those pieces of wood. I moved that down a little bit so that you can get that closed up at the bottom from the inside and outside. And now I'm gonna tap that hole. Again, guys, I'm gonna tell you consider how much water is going through your barrel because it's not about filling up the barrel it's what do you do with the water that continues to come once the barrel is full you can't turn off the rain um, I'd thought about putting diverters in the downspout but man I have looked at a bunch of products that they make for this and they're all kind of stupid and you don't have a lot of control over them with this I have total control and I never have to worry about it so there you can see we're getting down to the last one getting her all screwed in and I can remove that scrap wood and that unit is put together nice and tight with a gasket on the inside and ready to go out to the gutter fitting. Now at this point I can seal up this gutter fitting with some tubed product or whatever but I'm not gonna. I don't care if it leaks a little there. The majority of it's going to discharge right out and down this little gutter assembly that I'm building. Um, now the other thing you want to keep in mind is when you put discharges on this, no matter what your configuration is, you don't want to go straight down if your spigot's down there because you don't want to be working behind your spigot to get to the water. So I positioned it to the side to get it out of my way so that the spigot is easy to get to. So that at the bottom there will get another connector and I will be able to discharge that down a downspout extension tube. So this is it pretty much fully assembled with what we've seen in the video so far. This is something cool that I found at Lowe's, a FlexGrate downspout filter. It has a pre-filter right up there at the top to catch leaves. And then, of course, once it comes down through this little gizmo I built, it's going to filter here as well. I used a PVC elbow to run that pipe right down through here. You see how it's got the pre-filter there, and it's got this little hose. 
and this hose I ran into a PVC 45 degree elbow which I screw mounted to the top of the grate and screw mounted the top of the grate into the barrel. Now that overflow water will run right down this discharge unit that we built as well and I will be hooking up to that black hose here in a second. I'm running to the store for another fitting. And then of course, check that out. There's our spigot. Nice and easy to turn. Quarter turn ball valve. That is gonna be pretty sweet. I'll probably lift this thing up higher in the future, but honestly with the hose fitting, I don't think I'll have to. So now you see the full assembly and really how simple it is to build one of these things. Now I'm not saying my way is the best way. I'm saying my way is the way I needed it to be, especially in a hurry for the reasons that we're collecting this rainwater. I have another video that I'm going to talk about coming up pretty soon regarding water filtration and even being able to drink your rainwater after safely filtering it for consumption. We're consuming a lot of crap out of our groundwater and I think we're going to start trying to drink filtered rainwater and see how that goes. But aside from it, at least we know the garden will be much happier having access to rainwater as it's intended to. So that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching. Like I said, I'm going to be putting out another video pretty soon here in the future, and I'll make sure to link it at the end of this video when it's there. But keep an eye out for it, because I want to talk about water filtration, and I want to talk about alternate water sources, whether it's during a crisis or in preparation for a crisis, or just because you don't like your city water and want to try something else. I've got some pretty interesting information that I've acquired over the years about water filtration and products out there that are definitely the best. You can pay a lot for stuff that isn't the best, and you can pay a pretty reasonable price for the stuff that is the best. So I want to share what I know and what I've learned. Anyways, thanks for watching the video. I hope it was helpful, and I hope it gave you some ideas on how you would do this yourself. Like I said throughout the video, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. We just chose to go this way this time. It's going to do exactly what I need for this short-term project build. Uh, and what I need in the foreseeable future, at least for the beginning of the summer here when we're getting ready to start getting the garden going. So again, thanks for watching, God bless. And please like, subscribe, and comment on the video. I love the comments and I respond to every single one of them. We have great conversations in the comments of some of these videos and I've learned some great things from you guys with the information that you share. So let's keep the community going, let's keep it positive, let's have a lot of fun and share our ideas, and I'll see you on the next one. Have a good one.